Hey, it's Rob Jackson with Fandroid.com, and I'm here with the HTC Incredible. So we're going to go over all the specs real quick and then dive into the hardware and give our impressions about that. First of all, we've got a 3.7-inch capacitive AMOLED touchscreen with 800 by 480 WVGA resolution. Below the display, you'll find Android's typical home, menu, back, and search keys, along with an optical trackpad that doubles as a selection button and triples as the phone's dedicated camera button. Above the display, we've got the earpiece, which is accented in Verizon Red, and to the right of the Verizon logo, we've got the status light. On the left side of the phone, we'll find the micro USB port and the volume rocker. On the top, we've got the power slash lock unlock button and the 3.5 millimeter headset jack. There's nothing on the right side of the phone, and on the bottom, all we've got is the speaker. While the front may seem a little plain Jane, as soon as you flip it over, it gets interesting. The Incredible has two canyon-like ridges on the back which give it a very distinguishing look. The 8 megapixel camera outlined in red has autofocus and to the right of those you see the dual LED flash. Just to the right of that you see the speakerphone. Snapping off the case reveals a whole lot of red and you've got the micro SD slot here which holds up to 16 gigabytes as well as the 13 milliamp battery which is removable. The guts of the Incredible include a 1 gigahertz Snapdragon processor, 512 megabytes of RAM, 512 megabytes of ROM, and 8 gigabytes of onboard memory. So that's the tour of the house. Now, how do I like it? Um, personally, I think that the hardware alone puts the HTC Droid Incredible uh, at the top of the heap in terms of America, at least, at least for now. Uh, it's definitely the best Android phone on Verizon. It's definitely the best phone on Verizon. And in my opinion, it's definitely the best phone in the United States at the moment. For starters, the phone's slim. It's less than half an inch. It's, I think, like four and a half ounces. Uh, it's really light, and some people are saying plasticky, and I mean, I guess I can I can see that, especially compared to the Motorola Droid, just because it's a, it's a tank. But I think it's nice that they stayed simple. I mean, if you look at the front, nothing crazy about this. It's got the the keys where you would expect them. Um, you know, it even removes the dedicated camera key in favor of a simple right side, simple bottom. So there isn't that, that much you have to worry about or think about. Uh, what where it does get a little interesting is on the back side, but that's where you know not a lot can go wrong. So why not stay safe where functionality is needed and go a little bit crazier where you can afford to go a little bit crazier. Um, I think the back has a kind of like an artsy rugged design, and with the red accents on the speaker and the camera, along with the the front, which is kind of like screaming like. I'm tough, back up, I don't even know you like that. So, I think it's really cool, and it's a really nice, uh, it's a nice design, it balances function and design, um, I think it's a winner in the, in the style department. The screen is good, I wouldn't call it amazing, uh, it can be amazing, but it faces some adversity when you're talking about smudges and sunlight, which you know, don't really hurt it in the long run, it can just be irritating on a, you know, on a sunny day when you're really trying to look at the phone and it's shining directly down on it, but overall the screen is very nice. One thing I'm not a big fan of is this optical trackpad, but I'm not a fan of optical trackpads in general. I mean, you can scroll right and left with it, but for me, the reason I don't like it too much is, say you're on the, on the web and you're trying to go up and down, I mean, you can go one at a time, but there's no really flicking where there is with a regular track ball. You can actually flick and move up several things at a time depending on how hard you flick. So that's kind of an irritation, but I do really, really, really like it for the fact that it is the dedicated camera button. Um, I complain about the one on the top because when you push it down, it kind of, uh, unless you're really steady, you know, it can make the camera a little bit wobbly so pushing it in here I think makes it a lot more stable uh, so I love it for that reason and like the clickiness of it but don't like track pads in general I'd prefer it be a ball the fact that the camera has 8 megapixels is awesome I think once you start getting up to 10 and 12 uh, that's probably the limit of what you really need unless you're 
planning on taking huge posters with your phone but the 8 megapixels are really really nice feature to have of course the dual LED flash is great and autofocus is kind of a necessity if you're plan on doing any picture taking with your phone so it's good that it has that the interesting thing here is this canyon that we talked about the top or like volcano here is the is the extra camera so if you're laying this flat down it goes camera for, or it goes camera lens first which uh, I mean I'm not sure it will be a problem but it's a little bit interesting and um, and it'll be interesting to see how that plays out in the long term durability of the phone and the camera one good thing about this is because this side is raised both the canyon and um, and the camera you've got this valley here and the valley is the speakerphone so when this is laid down there's a little bit of air there's a pocket right there so the actual sound of the speaker uh, is able to uh, gain a little more distance and vibrancy so the speaker is actually really good on this phone it's not overwhelmingly loud or super loud but it's it's fairly loud and it's nice and clear one thing I found a little odd was the micro USB cable looks like it's a weird kind of shape and um, it doesn't look like this really fits in there because this has like a U shape to it whereas this is just more flat and the way that it looks like it should go in it doesn't go in it actually goes in the other way or at least it looks to me uh, which I found a little bit odd but just make sure you're careful when plugging this in for the first time or in general that you're not really trying to shove it in there because um, because it's easy to get confused which direction it goes and you don't want to damage the phone the 3.5 millimeter headset jack on this is really nice and just a little heads up it comes with FM radio if you plug in a headset so we'll get into that a little later in the review but that is awesome if you ask me Of course, it is always nice when you have the micro SD slot uh, and you're able to get out the micro SD card without having to remove the battery so your phone stays on. That's nice, that's great, that's dandy, but really the magic of this phone is more what's inside it. One gigahertz uh, Snapdragon processor, the RAM, the ROM, and the 8 gigabytes of internal memory, which is huge. I mean, most Android phones to date have only come with, you know, well, definitely less than a gigabyte of internal memory so I think that's a huge plus um, especially with how high powered this phone is with the 8 megapixel camera uh, with all the multimedia stuff you're going to be doing I think that it's a big perk but I think the incredible is just kind of the total package and it in my opinion the hardware makes it the the phone to beat for the moment in terms of America at least uh, and you know you've got a nice design simple functional high powered hardware fast specs it's the real deal so uh, there it is ladies and gentlemen the HTC incredible hardware